just a few fellas on a podcast Ripping in the pitching jokes and sharing some laughs Or I blind the bread drug of Jerry Bernstein Ooh, they want to know if it's something It's just anything All right, guys, let's do our sound check. Wow, uh, Jared, can you keep the energy down? I want to get right into business, okay? <laughs> you seem All like right. a guy who just can't wait to record an episode. All oh right. Oh, my God. I'm so uh, excited to see you guys. I want okay, I don't want to lose any of this gold here. Great. Woohoo! Uh, <laughs> what's up, Jared? Boy. What's going on? Oh you seem, my! You seem to get a day. Oh huh. boy! It's not a day. It's a it's a couple of weeks, man. Oh. I have just been living living on the edge, you know. Just living been, on the edge. Not you know like a like like a like leading a Caprio in the nineties. No stopping. Club, club, another club. Bus, club. You a fight with some guys with Tobey Maguire. That's right. Did that happen? <laughs> They're friends, and they in the '90s they were known as like I forget they had, they had some name for themselves. Them, I mean, think maybe Mark Wahlberg, and they would just go around like pay a lot of money at bars, be like hit on whoever, be like we're gonna fuck your girlfriend, and then just start like fighting dudes. I forget. Then they had oh, they shit. had a name for themselves, oh, the Pussy Posse. I think it was, it was ah called. right. That doesn't really mean that they fight, you know? No, no, it doesn't. But well, the, I guess maybe if you like, oh, we make other guys look like pussies. That's a bunch of steps. Yeah, I'm not gonna give them. <laughs> I don't I don't believe the three of them have the collective creativity to to come up with a name like that. Um I feel like Leo was like, I'm gonna fuck your girlfriend, and Mark Wahlberg is like, I'm gonna fight you, and then Toby was like, Yeah. <laughs> pussy pussy. The three of us are the same. We're all, we're all equally we're all... cool and we all equally fuck and we're all equally tough. <laughs> So yeah, guys, the last time I saw you all was at my bachelor party. Yeah. We burr, had burr, burr, burr. so much fun. You know, I was I was a little on drugs at the party. A little bit. And uh, I forced everybody to listen to like hours and hours of my stories towards the end of the night. Nice. I Listen, I will say mm -hmm. it felt like for a lot of people it might have been forced. But for me, I enjoyed the whole time and I was oh, there nice. till the end. <laughs> but now I can never say to you guys, have you heard this story before? Because you're going to be like, yes, <laughs> yes. You remember when you wouldn't stop talking for three and a half hours? Yeah. you. you well, how, long, how long did the story one? go until because i had to leave um uh, when this did we... went till the end i had to stop actually had to stop jared because i was like there's one last thing i want to do if you continue with this story unfortunately i'm gonna have to go home before we do that so i then, think it was probably that, midnight that that i stopped telling stories yeah. something like that we did the roast and i was very much waiting for jared to get to all of his like final closing statements to everybody so i could say everybody that's the roast and it <laughs> never happened <laughs> I, love I first it. of all, I just want to get this on the record. I loved the roast so much. Everybody did such a great job. I loved yeah, your guys' so jokes so much. And I didn't even real. I wasn't even planning on doing this, but like me then roasting everybody else le led really well into story hours. You know, <laughs> did everyone get their compliment? Everybody got their compliment. Everybody got. Oh, yeah, but I had to I really keep about. Jared on task. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm but sure. I was having so much fun, guys. Like, <laughs> I, I mean it. Like, it was so much fun for me to just. It was a blast. Be I'm cooking glad story, 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 story. Talk about this. Talk about this, man. I had so much fun. So then the next day, I had like a drug hangover, and I was just like physically completely exhausted, mentally completely exhausted, and I had to pack because I was going on vacation the next day with. Kirsten and her family. So I took it as easy as I possibly could, fly out to California. Kirsten and I drive from Los Angeles up to Pismo Beach. We were hanging out with her family for the week and just like arrive and asleep. That was Jarrett. Just arrive and asleep. And then, you know, four days of doing activities with her family, which was very, very fun. We flew back on Saturday. It was a whole day of traveling. Just basically just been in recovery mode ever since. And I am still very, very worn out. This is not a body that you can do things like that with. I've had terrible... I think this is the first day I've been back that I didn't start my day off with diarrhea, which was very oh, exciting no. for me. Oh, congratulations. Thank you this very much. Like That's a party. It's great. <laughs> I, I, I gotta say, like, the idea of going to like a family obligation 
kitchen immediately after being hung over. Like, mm -hmm. I won't feel like I got to recover until I am actually home in my own yeah. bed. Yeah, so, you yeah. know, it wasn't the best planned thing, but, you know, we uh, we had we're, we got a wedding coming up. And so we kind of have to fit things in where they can sure. go, you know. So I got a couple of things for you guys. And we also we, we played football on the beach and I hurt my chest while playing football. And so mm -hmm. every day we've been back, I've had trouble. Every time I lie down, it hurts to, like, get back up and I can't really use my left hand for things. Are so, you, did yeah. Did you play chess or you had a stroke? Wait, what? What did you say? Did you play chess? You said you, you were playing chess? What, what did no, play played football on the beach. Played football. Oh, my he God. Hurt um, you hurt his chest. I hurt, I hurt my chest. chest. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, did, did you play football or have a stroke? There we go. You're like, I can't use the left side of my body. It's kind of hard to speak. <laughs> Maybe a little column A, a little you know, column B. You know, football. <laughs> that, would football. A, that would be a whole new level of jar. He's like, ah, I played chess yesterday. <laughs> ah, ah. <laughs> Can't use my left arm. I didn't even blink. Oh, I was like, yeah, yeah. Oh he played God. chess, now he's sore. <laughs> oh, oh, I read a book yesterday. Oh, for 20 <laughs> minutes, I read a book. Were you the rook? Was that what <laughs> happened? <laughs> I got, so I got a story for you guys. I got two stories for you guys. Pre-bachelor party, I was uh, running around town running errands. I decided that I was going to take a city bike back home. And I didn't have my backpack with me. I didn't have any hand sanitizer on me. And I'm very concerned about monkeypox. And monkeypox is all about sustained contact. So I was like, I really want to make sure I sanitize these, these handlebars before I get on the city bike. Before I fuck them. <laughs> Before I put the handles up my butthole, uh, I'm, and I was also in a rush. So I was like, I was like, how can I very quickly get some hand sanitizer? And I was like, all right, well, I know there's not a CVS or a Dwayne Reed anywhere near me. So maybe I can go into like a, a business or a restaurant and like steal some of their hand sanitizer and then carry it over to the bike and then sanitize the bike handles that way. And so I do, I, I, I managed to find it. You know, I find a restaurant and I walk in and I pretend like I'm looking at the menu and I go, well, interesting, I might eat here sometime. And then I get a little squits of, uh, of hand hand sanitizer. I'm like, haha. And I just like walking around with my hand sanitizer like this in my hand. And then I run into a friend that I haven't seen in 10 years. <laughs> just holding hand sanitizer like a little bit of cum that is having my hand like this. And then I have to have a catch up conversation. With, hey, how's it going? I said immediately, I was like, I'm holding hand sanitizer because I'm a crazy person. That's story number one. He's like, oh yeah, uh, yeah I, I stick to city bike things in my butt too. I get it. <laughs> oh, me? I'm doing great. I didn't just have to steal a squirt of hand sanitizer <laughs> because I'm so poor that I can't afford to buy my own. That's definitely not what happened. When we were having a uh, uh, lunch breakfast at your bachelor party, I had a weird moment of like the server was not great. Mm -hmm. The restaurant was excellent. But because both you and Rob, I've worked in customer service. I've never worked in the service industry. I've never worked as a, as a waiter or server. And so because you and Rob have both worked there for, you know, so many years, I had to like look to you guys first to be like, can we be upset about this? Mm -hmm. And once you guys were like, he's going to bring the bread. I was like, yeah, this guy sucks. But I was so ready to be like, this guy sucks, I think. But I have to, you guys, Yeah. Uh, I was actually talking about this with a friend of mine. It's like, because I know this stuff really well, there are so many things that I'm extremely lenient about where I'm like, yeah, you know, it happens sometimes, things get busy, mm -hmm, blah, 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 mm -hmm. you get things wrong, blah, blah, blah. But then we both agreed. I was like, but then there are a couple of very weird, more obscure things that people wouldn't know about that if this person did do this to me, I'm going to lose my shit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just because I'm like, okay, that you never do. <laughs> it's like that you never say. I would never get away with that. My boss would never let me get away with that. So if someone ever did one of those things, I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You guys are you very patient. Not. But when you get pissed, you <laughs> Very you angrily reach... still leave a good tip. Because you, <laughs> yes, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. We're angry because we are. We've set our bar so high, and yet you still manage to jump over it. You know, it's like, <laughs> wow, guys, wow. So here's the story I was really excited about telling you guys. My in-laws. Why don't you tell that one first next time? <laughs> My in-laws are a little bit of a tough crowd. Like I, when I'm around them, I, I feel like I really have to like pick my shots for like when I'm gonna try to say something funny. And it's not because they have like a bad sense of humor or anything, but they're just, they're operating on a different rhythm than I think every other group that I've ever been with is, you know? Like they're such a big family that sometimes they, 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 their, their attention is like, is too diverted, you know? It's like, they're not a oh, collective, you know? Sometimes like these people are having a conversation, these people are having a conversation, that conversation kind of bleeds into this conversation, 
situation, you know? And so I always, so I've had a couple of real air balls, you know, trying to do jokes with them. But the, the times that I've, I've had jokes that have worked have been like, yeah, fucking hell. So I had the biggest swing and a miss though on this trip where we are all, we're all playing poker. People are drinking. I'm on edibles and we're just like having a really nice time. Oh, I should also mention for the story that Kirsten's family is, they are people Clear. of color. So there are people of color. We're playing poker. One of them is trying to like exchange some chips because they have like too many of this and too many of that. And the chips that they are trying to get rid of are the white chips. And so someone is like, what are you doing? And they go, I'm replacing the whites. And I go, I knew it. <laughs> nothing. Not a, not a, not a, as though I wasn't oh, even making it. Oh, that's not a good one to, oh, yeah, that's not a good one to miss on. Really high level of <laughs> big um, swing, big, big act outs, you know. <laughs> but here's the thing. The youngest brother sitting right next to me, he does like a little giggle. And then I do, because I'm having a really good time. I start laughing and I'm like, Spencer, you're the only one who likes that. And then everyone at the table is like, what? What'd you say? I was like, how could you possibly have missed that? I was yelling. <laughs> <laughs> My, I did a giant ah, ah, like that. So and then funny. I just all I did was I did the joke again and they all laughed. Like I said, it's not the material. It's just the the rhythm is off. Yeah. You know, there's something strange about it. I, I don't know. Never blame the audience. <laughs> <laughs> But good recovery to pick up on Spencer laughing and then and then therefore segueing into getting another opportunity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, if you just missed on that, ooh, what a whiff! When I said, "Why, Spencer, you're the only one who thought that was funny," it it like piqued the interest Mm -hmm. of everybody else and was like, "Ooh, now we're gonna pay attention to what you started doing crowd work so that you could get into the material again." You know what? These skills are so transferable; they really are. (laughs) It's it's incredible. Brett, Brett made me think of like. (laughs) <laughs> like, oh, this is a story I really want to tell you. I like, maybe she just started with that. I like imagine if Jared came out with like a newspaper, just like every morning the headlines, like bed sheets off 10%. And then you get to like G17, you're like, oh, I really wanted to tell you this that America went to war. I really wanted to tell you about <laughs> what the, war. the president's been shot. <laughs> <laughs> and then I was thinking that you like, you bury it in like the crossword, but like the magic jumble word within the crossword. You're like, oh my God, I got to do so. You find that the president was shot oh my god <laughs> why would you bear would you do that <laughs> wait so the sections of the newspaper are like what i did today um <laughs> how i'm feeling and then and then okay 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 this is what i really wanted to tell you guys <laughs> I, oh go go ahead jerry do you have, say, that's do you have, do you have uh, <laughs> an even better story that you were saving <laughs> That's the party. Woo-hoo. And that's all my that's all my catch ups is all I was gonna say. Uh, I would like to know, Rob, what happened to you because you said I'm running a little late. I I had a funny day and I was like, Rob never says something like that. And mm-hmm, just because mm-hmm. that could be like, oh yeah, yeah, like I witnessed I had to help a detective solve <laughs> um, a homicide. Pretty funny. <laughs> yeah. Pretty funny. Funny day. Well, you just need his shoes. I was visiting my brother in Las Vegas. I played a lot of tournaments this trip. The last one I decided to play was this uh, daily at the South Point Casino near my brother's apartment at 6.05 p.m. And then I wound up running super, super deep in it to the point where we eventually were just like, guys, we got to stop playing. We should just agree on a chop. So we agreed on this, like, it's called an ICM chop. That's to do with the amount of chips that you have, basically, which I think I was probably uh, second or maybe just like a close third in chips. So it was really good for me. I got between second and third place money. So almost pretty much got second place money. But we played until like close to 2 a.m. And I have this 7 a.m. flight. So I'm looking at my brother. I'm like, ah, boy. I was like, you know, this is like one of the I didn't really think I'd sleep that much anyway, knowing that I have to get for a 7 a.m. flight. So I was like, whatever, I guess let's just get some food and then I guess I'll pack my stuff and then I guess I'll just go to the airport. So I do one of those kind of like stupid all-nighter things because I just don't know how I'm going to rest exactly. So I get to the airport and day, the shortened version of the day was just, I have a connecting flight in Denver. That connecting flight does eventually get pushed back two hours. I should have been back home by like 4-ish, 4 p.m. I think. But the connecting flight in Denver get pushed back a couple hours. Then we get on that plane, thumbs up. But then we do not not land in LaGuardia like we're supposed to. We get redirected to Baltimore because of some thunderstorms. So that was in Baltimore for a few hours. And then we finally got to LaGuardia at around 10.30 p.m. But the plane's luggage did not get to LaGuardia until 1.30 in the morning. What? 
What? But not my luggage. Everybody what? else's. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> and I was like, I it was like, that. it was like such a moment. I was, everyone was like, all right, this is it. We, you know, Baltimore planes landed. We're sorry. This is it. It was like carousel. Everyone's picking up their stuff <laughs> except for me. I was like, mm-hmm. I would have left at 1030. If Everybody's I, I hugging and dancing yeah. like, we did it. <laughs> We yeah. all have our luggage. <laughs> there were so many moments like that. There were so many moments of, uh, like, um, you ever see Come From Away? I fucking hate this musical. I've seen it twice now. I love Come From Away. I knew you I've would. only it's... seen it once. <laughs> Rob saw it twice. He hated it so much. <laughs> I did. I, I was forced to see We're it seeing everywhere, everything, once. everywhere, all at once on Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> Rob hates something. He really wants to make sure he he knows that he hates it. And he knows why he hates it. <laughs> I want to make sure it wasn't a fluke. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, God, man, that musical bothers me. And uh, there were so many like phony like come from away moments in there. If you don't know, come from away is about you know while a horrible tragedy actually happened. No, no, we're gonna make a musical about a people who were inconvenienced that day. <laughs> That's what we want to see. That's not offensive to you the are fucking memories of everybody who died on 9-11. Jesus heartless, Christ. Rob. Heartless. I'm heartless. I'm a heartless yeah. because, because of all the deaths that we made a fucking Broadway musical about a bunch of idiots who happen to have, like, the time of their lives <laughs> in, like, Iceland or whatever the fuck. Wait until Rob Cat. finds out what was happening to Godot while they were waiting for him. <laughs> <laughs> You wrote a play about those guys who were just waiting for me? Are you kidding? <laughs> the day that I had, and you wrote a play about the guy waiting for me. And I don't know if you have read this play. They don't do anything. They're not having a fun <laughs> chat or anything. It's not like a good podcast episode. It's just, just being a fucking idiot waiting around for me, trying on hats. There's a part where they try on hats together. <laughs> Oh my god! Meanwhile, it me, was, I lost, I lost my luggage. I, I you know, <laughs> it's so funny. I, I, I mean, if you if you sit there, I don't know, an audience, whoever's listening, if you are sitting there for the first thirty minutes of Come From Away, I don't see how you can't be viscerally offended <laughs> by the fact that they are like dramatizing people who are waiting on a plane. They're like, we're just. We're just on the tarmac and we just don't know what's we're just sitting here and there's just like my phone is dead. I'm like massive there are people disagree. who are dead. Massive disagree, Rob. Oh my god, it's in- I haven't I- seen it, but mm-hmm. can I just offer the alternative of a musical on 9-11 would be <laughs> really <laughs> offensive. <laughs> Maybe the it's dance well number done. where people are jumping from the buildings. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, it doesn't have to be like that kind of musical, but that, but mm-hmm. I guess that's what mm-hmm. I mean. Like, there it could be more of a late Miz, you know, yes. it could be more of a late Miz show. Uh, uh, but this isn't it. That's mm-hmm. that's for damn sure. Disagree. Uh, anyway, so so we're having a lot of these like <laughs> like lighthearted fun come from away moments where ever we're like every time something is just like so stupid happening, and then they're like, "Hey, folks, well, guess what? We are finally on our way." And everyone's like. Clap, clap, clap. And I was like, don't stop clapping for them. They, they fucked your life up. Like, so, like, this is a horrible <laughs> science experiment. And they've ruined you. And now they give you just a bitchy pee, like a little, like, what they promised to give you hours ago. And they're like, we're finally doing that. And now they're like, yay, we love you again. I was like, stop loving them. They're they're terrible. <laughs> they they're keep on doing the wrong thing. This Same is thing with the luggage. Rob did this also in the musical. He was a character in it where they're like, oh, my God, we're finally finally get back to do people died how are you having fun right now in this small town in canada uh i saw this years ago and i was but this is true like literally the first 30 minutes i am jaw dropped by how fucking absurd and like truly in my opinion callous the whole thing is i'm like i cannot believe that you really went ahead and did a 9-11 musical and you chose this as the subject matter Blah, it's so <laughs> stupid and then it's just it's stupid uh, on top of that but i but the, truly in my mind i mean you know that that's how i was feeling about it <laughs> guys I let's all go see come from away together and then we can do a oh, patreon man. where we talk about it oh. 
Rob, <laughs> this is to give you another opportunity to watch a thing that you hate, which I know is your favorite thing in the world. Is you know, have, have you ever had the experience where you watch something again and you did enjoy it? Because uh, that movie Punch Drunk Love, I hated it the first time I saw it, but it kept being on while I was in college. And then I kept watching it. And then like the second time I was like, oh, I, I think I kind of like it. And then I, the third time I was like, I really like this movie. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yes, I have had a turnaround. The biggest turnaround for me was with There Will Be Blood. That was my biggest turnaround where I saw it the first time. I was expecting a different kind of movie, I guess. Just it was a lot more slow and character piece than Yeah, the blood is until the end. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was my mantra getting through the movie. I was like, eh, there will be blood, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, don't worry. It's like the opposite uh, of an HBO script. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> where they're like, there must be got violence in the last ten pages. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's not the way the HBO does this script. They have to there has to be sex in the first ten pages. I said the opposite. I know, I'm doing a bit about how I, I keep uh, on saying that. Uh, <laughs> okay. I missed it. Oh, you sold stupid. it very well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <gasps> I knew it. <laughs> anyway, uh, so so I don't know where the luggage is right now. I'm not sure if I'm, if I'm oh, getting man. it soon. I am about. blown away by this, Rob. The fact that you guys' luggage came later, like, doesn't it always come on the plane with you? Like, isn't that the way not that they it fucking always up. works? Well, because they, they're, they're making, the FAA is making, this is my, my guess, the FAA is making calls last minute, like, okay, thunderstorms, we gotta cancel this flight. And then the baggage people, there's like, okay, well now we gotta switch all of the bags off of this plane to that plane, and so there's a lot of coordination, and I think stuff just gets lost in, and mm. oh shit, we didn't get that bag on the plane, or these bags on the plane, so we gotta put them on this plane, this plane's already full, I don't, I'm just assuming that it's a, it's a complicated process, because it's been happening since as long as I've been flying. I mean, I have to imagine that that's the case, you know, but I'm still like, the suitcase. you know, the fact, I, I, can, I can see how that's like one suitcase gets lost, but the fact that everyone's like, your suitcase is coming hours after you land. Everybody's suitcase is coming hours after you land is like, I don't get it. I don't understand how that happens. I liked your joke, Brett. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really bummed hear. for you that you don't have your luggage. That fucking sucks. I appreciate it. Yeah, I'm trying to think. Well, he said brain. it was funny. It's funny. I did. I did have one line that was good. Everybody now. Everybody's waiting in the baggage service line, and the line is very, very long. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like one. And, and one after another, people are actually coming out of the room, going, "Oh yeah, flight 1185." Because we got rerouted to Baltimore. I don't really know because we we're on the same plane, so I'm equally as confused as Jarrett. I don't believe we switched actual planes. Mm. I do know that because other people had LaGuardia as being their final destination, that I think other other bags may have come onto that plane. So I don't know if they also thought that they had to switch other ones off it or something. I'm not 100% mm. sure. So you said the words final destination, which reminded me of the movie Final Destination, which mm -hmm. I think is hilarious if you think about like all the switching that happens at the airports with canceled flights and whatnot. If that's another thing that they have to do at the end. Of, okay, so your, your baggage isn't coming. You five people are dead. Um, and <laughs> oh, that's really, really funny. So we're just we're gonna try to kill you guys sometime this week. We we'll apologize for the delay. Yeah, uh, death is just very confused. Like, wait a minute. So we were supposed to be on there, so that means that you were supposed to die yesterday. So we'll have to kill you in this order. Wait, no, so wait, no. when are you dying? I I don't know. I still don't know. I don't know. I, that's why point. that's why I've been in line. That's why I've been waiting here for you to tell me. <laughs> oh, you don't know? You the don't know service worker on her computer it's just like i don't i don't see it on here i don't say well who who knows this then who knows <laughs> death death knows okay but death doesn't just come down and talk to me sir all right <laughs> oh oh so so now i'm waiting in this long baggage line everybody's waiting but one by one people are coming out saying oh 1185 it's supposed to be coming in you know in 20 minutes oh coming and i just still keep on waiting in line because i'm like well I, I, I wouldn't mind getting my own personal answer about this and then this woman i go in and she is she is definitely having herself a day where obviously everything's going wrong and she has to deal with a lot of angry people. And so I come in and she's like, do you, do you happen to have any aspirin? And I was like, no, nah, no, I'm sorry. And then I look at the guy. I was like, I mean, if I did, it's in my luggage, probably. <laughs> <laughs> they both enjoyed that. So or you'd be like, I do. It's in my bag. If you find it... <laughs> You can have all of the, you all can the have aspirin. Every you aspirin want. that I have in my luggage is yours if you can just get it here. So. Man, aspirin's such an old person medication. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, I feel, feel like, like Advil's the go-to for this generation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, wait. So, what day did this all happen? Was it yesterday? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That is. So insane, I got in. I got in close to uh, two thirty, or I don't know. Maybe I got to bed by like three last night. So. Ugh. Uh, I was a little, and like I said, I already Thanks. did the all nighter into the flight. Yeah. So like there were, there were periods where I was like, 
I really don't know what to do. Like, <laughs> sleep -wise. Oh, you poor thing. There's never a time when I felt comfortable to to even like nap because I'm, mm -hmm. right. I'm always on on alert. And uh, did you finish up in Vegas? You know what? I did. I have yeah. I have in, uh, interesting uh, tournament stuff, uh, but I won't get into that now. We played poker. That's where I had my famous uh, I knew it moment. And um, I, I just had the worst cards. And I was just sitting there thinking, like, I wonder if Rob could do something with this, you know, where it's like the number of hands that I folded that I would have won was like yeah. once, you know, mm, uh, right. but it was mostly just like bleeding chips on the on the the blinds. And I was just like, man, I just I don't know what else I could have done, you know, except for bluffing, which, you know, that's a whole I, then I just would have been out of the game even sooner, probably, you know. <laughs> Potential. Uh, uh, cor correct me if I'm wrong, but did uh, supporter and and often time chat contributor Gus Walsh get to join you there in Vegas? He did. Yeah, Whoa. we got. I, Gus came to my table. Speaking of bluffing, uh, bluffed uh, him and this uh, other Asian fella off a of hand. But I had good equity in the hand. I had an open ended straight draw, and I just you know I didn't want to see any more cards. So ooh, ooh new Patreon tier. Rob takes your money directly. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't tell him to play ahead with me. I don't know what he was thinking. Yeah, but we could, I'm saying. We could add that as a tier. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> it's zero dollars, but you just go to wherever Rob is playing yeah, poker. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Brett, anything going on with you? Any catch-ups for, for the old Brett Drucker? Mm. Nope. Druck, Druck man? 5,000? Oh, cool. yeah, yeah. Him? Yeah. <laughs> I uh, went on a date with a lady, and... Uh, she was telling me about a bad date she went on and she was like, this guy, like one of the first things he said is like, you're not going to believe the 2020 I had. And I was like, oh, that's, she told me like that. He was just like, oh, I know everybody had a bad 2020, but mine was worse. And I was like, oh, it's funny. I'm, I think, I think on the podcast, I, I discussed this like character who's like, can you believe 9-11 happened to me? Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm, and, uh, they were and a musical like, about it. <laughs> she, she, she goes, she goes, oh. <gasps> And I was like, what? And she was like, that was like the next conversation. He was oh. like, from <laughs> some part of New York that was affected. He was like, 9-11 was the worst. Like, I know it, it, a, a lot of people were affected, but it really, for me, it was oh, so did bad. you did you <laughs> have to jump out of a building to your death? <laughs> yeah. Well, then I don't think it was. I don't think it was. Um, but I was like, I, in Canada? I was like, did I'm sorry. Like, that I, I can I'm, understand. That I can get. That's a story right there. <laughs> Oy, it's a, that's uh, a musical yeah. about the triumph of the human spirit. Anyways, what else? Anyways, hey, that's, that's, fun. that's hysterical, Brett. I love that. All right. Should we get to these jokes? Let's get to these bits. Let's get to these bits. Let's get to these bits. David, want to guess, guess the, the order? order? Oh, yeah. Guess the order. Mm. Well, while you guys are guessing the order, we got so many comments here. Yeah, we do have a lot of comments. From Jensen Ellis, how many, how many guys did you beat up at the bachelor party? <laughs> Story posse. Janko <laughs> uh, Danky about come from away, Rob. I think it's supposed to be about finding the heartwarming stories in the midst of the massive tragedy, which that's how I took it. Also, I didn't even get into the fact that it's a shitty musical. <laughs> It's all so shitty. The music is Brett and I are going to go terrible. see Come From Away. I'm so excited about this. And then no. Brett's going to be able to break this tie. <laughs> you still haven't seen Everywhere, Everywhere, Everything, Everywhere all at once. You, there's so many ties you got to break between me and Rob. Oh, I didn't know I was supposed to see that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They wrote one song for the musical, and then the rest is just this weird, like, like, boom, 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 boom. Then, 1123, we have to go over here. Da, 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 da. And I was like, oh, this is a cute little way to get a little exposition out for the first five minutes of the show. It's the entire run of the show. They never stop with that thing. Just boom, boom, boom. So it's like boom, Hamilton, boom. but it doesn't rhyme. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And less, less singing. Just yeah. all rap, all rap that isn't rap. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, we got a winner, everybody! Ivy Ooh. Rose six seven nine. The order Ivy this Rose. week is Rob Jeff Brett. Rob Jeff Brett. The order this week is Rob Jeff Brett. Yeah. And yeah. Ivy Rose is also our first comment. Yay! I got here early for once, so I feel Ooh. like you're having a day, Ivy Rose. She got here early so she could work out the algorithm of what the order is going to be mm. based on our hangout sesh. Alrighty, so first up, we got. Mr. Uh, Funny Previous Day, Rob uh, Ryan. Ryan. Uh, oh, wait. Well, Rob is, is swallowing. I wanted to point out something because <laughs> Rob messaged us about how funny his day was. And I thought there was like a weird like um, just I don't know, like a like I don't know if it's a spell check or what. You can tell me what this means. Uh, Rob messaged us. Had a funny day yesterday. Getting my shit together now. I'll fire up the Zoom as soon as I can, but might be running a little late being fully formed. 
It sounds like a little bit of code. Rob's a robot, and there's a little bit of code. He's like trying to get his body put back together, like the Iron Man <laughs> machine, and it's just like a little bit of code accidentally also typed out "body fully formed," <laughs> being fully formed. What does that mean? Um, I knew what I, I knew exactly what you meant. I don't. Yeah, mean? I don't think that was even a typo. Like, like what I don't does it mean? Like, like getting your shit together and being fully formed are the same thing. Running a little late, being fully formed. Yes, yes, yes. I'm, I'm running. Yeah, yeah. Like I'll yeah. be, like I'll open up the Zoom, so mm-hmm. I'll be here physically, but I'm not going to be in full form uh, uh, until, until. Oh, past, I, past, okay. Past, past yeah, afternoon. Yeah. That's my fault. That's my fault. All right, Rob, you ready to do this bit? I'm ready to do this. Maybe two things to share today. One is re- really just uh, an observation of a phrase. This is a phrase that I've just been huh, just thinking about where people say, you know, it's, it's not the end of the world, but literally nothing has been the end of the world uh, ever since the world started. So that can be said about every, even when the dinosaurs just got annihilated, like someone <laughs> still could have been like, eh, it's not the end of the world. So anyway, there's something to that. That's that was my first uh, thought here today. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I like if you can um, bridge like maybe Rome is burning Pompeii <laughs> before you, yeah, before yeah, you yeah. get to the dinosaurs. I, I love a little bit That's more funny. human that makes it a little bit funnier to me. But then right. but then the next step being dinosaurs, I think is great. Would it treat the problem if somebody said it's well, yeah, it's the end of my world. <laughs> right, yeah. Or you could even just go into like a human track. Like somebody's like, my wife, children, they, they all died on a train wreck. Right, right. Like it's, And it's I'm, I'm being sued for everything I own. You're like, well, it's not the end of the world. <laughs> it's not the end of the world. <laughs> yeah. You're still here. Yeah. <laughs> Pain- Painful. Experience that. Yeah. <laughs> what if there was an asteroid coming to, um, what, what if there was like, what if the sun went supernova and literally destroyed the world? Would then those people be like, all right, it's the end of the it's world. the end of the world. Yeah. <laughs> okay. This is the end of the world. I've said this before where uh, I don't know how bummed I would be if we, if the end of the world happened, if we all like just died at once. Mm-hmm. Something about that I think is kind of like beautiful and sweet mm-hmm. as opposed to just like other, just, just whatever. Like obviously I want people to experience life and have good times and whatever, but something about the entire world ending, like, you know, the sun going supernova, but our sun, by the way, won't go supernova. Our sun will turn into a red giant and will slowly engulf the solar system, but whatever. Uh, but if that happens, uh, I don't know, there's something cool about that. <laughs> I have a lot of questions about that, that asterisk that you put in there, Rob, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but uh, uh, that might be for another time. I don't want to heat up your time. Uh, just <laughs> going about over type two A supernovas. Yeah, exactly. The uh, uh, we can chew on two different things. The other mm-hmm. thing I thought of yesterday, which was kind of funny, because as I was giving the girl my luggage, because it was one of those like at the gate, she's checking it, and I'm walking in, and I was like on a Southwest flight, and the, the latest person that was like you know C thirty eight or C fifty, you know, one of like the last people to get on the plane. And then she's looking, she's like, ooh, we're yeah, we're gonna have to start checking bags. We're gonna have to probably start checking bags. And she's not like making me give her, her ba- my bag, but she was just like, mm, she's like looking like it's gonna happen. And she's looking at me and I'm like, uh, like, all right, should I not even try to go in there? Uh, Cause someone already came out with their bag. I was like, all right, maybe I shouldn't even try. And I was like, okay, all right. And I put the thing down and she looks at me. She's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, she's like, okay, where are you going, LaGuardia? Okay, we're good, we're good. Like everyone's in a rush don't even give me a tag don't even whatever just like oh, it'll no. it'll come to you and i was like yeah you know the few times that i don't like do my due diligence sometimes i get screwed and so i was like all right and then she says rather ominously so i was like yeah all right fine you can check it she's like it's yeah you can leave it there with laguardia yeah it'll get to laguardia she's like but you have like your medication and your keys <laughs> i was like are you planning on losing it <laughs> Right. Do you have like the important stuff? Like the bag is the important stuff. There's everything in there. <laughs> Don't make me take important stuff out so that now the bag is not important because it's important. It's. A, uh, I thought you were gonna say uh, as they're taking my bag away. I was like, should I say goodbye to my bag? Nah, I'll see you. I'll see you. Again. <laughs> <laughs> oh tell my no! Bag I love it. I didn't realize. Oh, <laughs> tell you always tell your it. bags that you love them every single time. <laughs> Uh, I actually I agree with you about the whole supernova thing like I do think that there's like a camaraderie that would be really 
really fun about it. Mm-hmm. It's part mm-hmm. of the reason why I love the movie Seeking a Friend mm-hmm. for the End of the World. Excellent. Ah, okay. I'm about to say, I thought you were going to name the bad movie. Everything Ever, Everywhere All at Once? No, the other bad movie, The War of the World Ends, with all the dumb actors in it. Just don't look up. Oh, don't, yeah, look, don't up. look up. <laughs> well, there's a camaraderie there too. Mm. See, you've ever the end of the world, though. That was good. We yeah. should, we, this is a, the subtitle of this is uh, Rob's Hate List of this episode. <laughs> Rob's Hate List. Well, you don't really know if something is the end of the world until it isn't. Like, it has to be a retrospect thing, though. If the asteroid is hitting the Earth and it, it doesn't destroy the Earth, then you could say, well, it's not the end of the world, but you don't really know that. Like, it would seem like it is the end of the world. This doesn't help the joke. I'm just pointing no, out. No, I like I like <laughs> No, I, this, is, this is usually how I wind up landing on jokes is just really thoroughly logically thinking through all the angles until one of them seems to be funny to me mm-hmm, or something mm-hmm. comes out illogical. Because you're right, like, once you have that first zombie, you know, you're just like, eh, it's not the end of the world. You're like, it could be, eventually. Mm, you know, yeah. this, might, this might be a zombie apocalypse, man. You don't know. If zombies ever really did exist, that is just like, it's bananas. We've created this theoretical, uh, fictional monster that if if it ever did occur where it's like oh my god the dead are coming back and if they bite you then you become a dead that walks around and also ease of you is that ever really happened it's just like wow we really fucking nailed it we're like, <laughs> we're like climate scientists we're fucking I mean, 10 out of 10 on that you know the idea oh. that that it wouldn't be quarantinable and preventable is pretty ludicrous but the actual idea of like i mean rabies is that you know it's an mm. animal that has lost its mind starts trying to attack everything near it and then mm. when it bites something it, it transfers so it's not it's not that far-fetched yeah i guess you're right i guess you're right um, we're just uh, i mean we're just talking it out you're just not mm-hmm. yeah, you're not an idiot or anything <laughs> oh, uh, fucking dumbass <laughs> Doesn't know that a zombie apocalypse could happen. I mean, the, the zombies are based on rabies. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's very rabies. Oh my God. I even say rabies in 28 days later. <laughs> but also, like, you know, every raccoon doesn't have rabies. Like, oh, yeah. there's, there's clearly a difference, you know? Because, like, yeah, but the, we are the most uh, populous. Yeah, yeah, I guess you're right. Species, right. I think, right? No, yeah, I yeah. guess insects probably. Uh, I'm so tired. I'm giving up on arguments so quickly. Uh, yeah, okay, you're right. <laughs> yeah, I guess you're right. <laughs> yeah, I like, I like a, a real example. Eh, it's not the end of the world. I think it's it's very funny. Uh, the more tragic you can make it, the more it would really yeah. seem like the end of the world. You know, what, what I think might be fun for me is finding out precisely the type of person, the why. You know, just, yeah, when when is it appropriate to say that? When is it not? Like, there's something funny to me about, like, you really ought to teach people when, what type of thing where that is comforting, other types of things where it's mm. not comforting. Maybe you don't always know. Yeah, it's um, not the end of the world really fits if it's something that's not even a little bit bad. Like, I missed mm-hmm. the train. It's not the end of the world. But if we're talking about, like, what Brett said about, you know, yeah. my family's dead and I'm out on the street and you go, well, it's not the end of the world. And yeah. it's like, I will kill you. Fuck <laughs> you. <laughs> I'll end your world, right? Yeah, now. exactly. You're, like, stabbing me. like, it's not the end of the world. <laughs> <laughs> Is it not the end of the world, huh? Is it not the end of the world? What if it's, um, like, um, there's no accountability for the person that said that, you know? So it's, like, uh, if something happens and this dude's like, hey, it's not the end of the world, and then it does turn out to be the end of the world everyone's like oh look how smart you were oh it's <laughs> not was the other well it was the end of the world. you said it wasn't the end of the world but it was <laughs> is there ever a moment when something big happens when the guy who wants to say he's not the end of the world is going like uh, <laughs> okay it's not the end it's not the end of the world, not the end of the world. That's, that is good. I, I like the idea of uh you give some examples and uh they're they're harsh and then it's like ah, it's not the end of the world and then give another example ah, it's not the end of the world and then it's the fun. The sun is turning into a supernova, and he's like, "Ooh, that's pretty bad." <laughs> I, it's so funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, or if we make the example real, we are in Pompeii, and so I was just like, "Ah, oh, man, you know, I just stepped in, uh, <laughs> stepped in camel poop." And it's, like, yeah. <laughs> it's not the end of the world. <laughs> just like, as, <sighs> just bubbling. <laughs> <laughs> Like a New Yorker cartoon or something. <laughs> well, they, they, in, in Pompeii, they kind of had the um, the death that you would want for all of us, Rob. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was kind of like an instant, just a blast of everybody was just fried instantly. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. That's, that's the way to go. All right. Thank you guys so much for the help. I appreciate it. It's funny. Uh, Rob, my bit today has to do with the end of the world also. Mm. 
Ooh. So it's two jokes about climate change. I don't know if I have the right connective tissue between the two ideas, but maybe it's enough. You guys let me know. Living in the climate apocalypse is like terrifying, but it's also kind of interesting. Like every day I'm reading the paper like I didn't know the earth could do that. You know, it's like the Lagos River in France dried up. It's like, that's scary. But also, I didn't know the earth could do that. <laughs> it's like the snow is on fire. Well, what about that? <laughs> wow, I didn't know you got it in you. Uh, it's gotten so bad that every time I see new construction happening, I'm like, okay, buddy. Okay, right. This is going to be a house. <laughs> okay, sure thing. <laughs> that's it. That's all I got. Those are two very funny separate ideas. There are people who are just like, they'll watch like a corpse decomposing and they're like, wow, the just nature is mm-hmm. is like so complex and beautiful, you know? Mm-hmm, uh, yeah. So that, that, that exists. And so I think that, that, that intro is just fine. Um, so yeah, maybe the connective tissue between these two ideas, maybe there needs to be a sentence in between when I go, the snow is on fire and it's like, well, how about that? I'm having a hard time looking past the climate. Climate change is, is is becoming a problem so fast. I'm in like survival mode where I'm like, all right, don't put down, don't buy a house. Don't, you know, like put down your roots anywhere. Be, be ready to go at any minute. Can I just offer, but realistically, I do realize it's really bad. Oh, yeah, that's a lot shorter. <laughs> <laughs> While you were going on, like I was like, all you have to say is, but I do realize it's pretty bad. <laughs> But I do realize it's pretty bad. I want to finish. Mm-hmm. Like, I know it's bad. Every time I see new construction happening, I'm like, yeah. okay, buddy. Yeah, that solves the, the transition easily. Does anybody, does anybody know who owns Antarctica? Are we just going to, like, be fighting over that? Uh, I think so, I think actually. Like yeah, because there was a whole thing with the Arctic, how the, there's so much, there's already been so much ice melting from the Arctic that now there are trade routes available and also potentially valuable resources that could be mined now, either gold or oil in the arctic in the arctic yeah yeah there's not, there's not land under there but there's but there's land underneath uh, you know the ocean <laughs> oh sure, sure sure uh and so now and, and nations have already started fighting over it but what about you the know? antarctic there is a lot of land there and it's gonna be beachfront property soon <laughs> i'm just wondering like who owns that because i'm pretty sure there's no one who does there's like a world like moratorium on any like development Penguins. in antarctica back in the 90s or something so, like, are we going to start, like, going to war over Antarctica? Probably. And, and I want it, by the way. <laughs> I do want, I want America to have it. You know who owns it now are just, like, the research scientists that have been living there, you know? It's <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. well, well, well. <laughs> <laughs> Every year, this job gets easier and easier, my man. <laughs> Anything else with this bit, everybody? No, I, I think like, all, all the beats were really funny, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you guys know what I'm talking about when I'm like, every time I see new construction, I'm like, very, I'm like, I can't believe you guys are doing this. I was a little bit on the fence as far as precisely what you meant by it. Like, are you really doing that? As in like, are you like, you're really going to do that to this planet? And then when you followed it up with some words, I was wondering if you meant more like, really, you think that like, that's going to be around for a while. Mm-hmm, that's a good mm-hmm. idea. So you don't I, think there's going to be a... Uh, mudslide or a mm-hmm. flood or a fire or you know a massive hurricane that's going to blow this over like you really put your money on this piece of land is going to be stable interesting interesting um, what okay. if you say like oh that's a nice house for the ocean to flounder <laughs> the flounder that will live in it <laughs> well, oh that's gonna look so great at the bottom of the ocean uh, yeah. yeah that's really funny i like that yeah yeah so maybe maybe even for someone like me if it was just a little bit more like even if you said like near the coast mm-hmm. every time i see mm-hmm. something i'm like oh yeah oh okay <laughs> okay well that's where a house now near the coast Bye. yeah that's kind of where this bit came from was when we were uh when we were in california and there were these like cliffside properties that were being built and I was just like, mm, I don't know. <laughs> you're Wildfires, really, landslides. Yeah, you're yeah. really trusting the consistency of the ground. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> but it kind of fits like there's so there are so few places right now where we can be confident things are going to be relatively stable going forward. Like, you know, the entire South is going to be so unbelievably hot, potentially unlivably hot in the near future that any construction there, I'm like, Really? You know, similarly, anything near the water, of course, anything on a cliff or in in the places where there have been wildfires. I'm just like, really? And so I kind of want the joke not to be about being just on a cliff, but just like anywhere, you know, Mm -hmm. Uh, maybe you could do, do different examples. Like for each example, like, oh, oh, okay. Well, that's 
on a cliff, you're like, maybe it's a mudslide example. Oh, that's a nice house for archaeologists to find one day under mm-hmm, the mm-hmm, mud. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. And then you oh, beat this, is gonna be oh, this will be great for, for, you know, the fish that will live in it. Maybe you can get one of those doors that kind of opens and closes and bubbles come up. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you guys have seen those in aquariums. Oh, this mall is going to be a wonderful place for people to bake to death. <laughs> you know, <laughs> there's like a, like a weird, like log form joke in here where, you, the nervous person that you are, are trying to like figure out where you might plant your roots, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but you're also like very, way too in the know about like things and climate and stuff. So you're like, so I'm trying to figure out where I'm going to be living with my wife eventually. But, like we know that th- these coasts are out; they're going to be underwater. You know, mm-hmm. you got the wildfires over here, tornadoes and hurricanes are going to take out all the Southwest and whatever. Blah blah blah. It's like, so, you know, I found it's like, you know, three Valley, Iowa, like there's like a little strip of land, <laughs> like a little three mile strip of land. <laughs> They're like, this, this is the place, everybody. That's the safety. <laughs> That's the only place that's safe in America. Well, when Curse and I were talking during uh, COVID, we were just sort of like, like fancifully being like, where do you think the safest place to live is because of this? And recently, every people that I talk to about that are like, I have also Googled this and we also know where we're going. It's a regular thing now where people are worried about like, well, where, where are we going to move to? It's not funny, but it's true. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's funny in the way that Rob's day yesterday was pretty funny. <laughs> and that it's really tragic. Yeah. But it's not the end of the world. It's not, it is not the end of the world. That's a really good point. I have another short one if we're out of juice for this idea here. Also, funnily enough, Rob, about uh, airplane travel. Uh, boarding a plane really shows you who we value in society. Like the first people that get on are the service members, the people who sacrifice their lives for this country. The very next group, rich people. It is like rich people. <laughs> you guys are so close to being as good as the people who put their <laughs> lives on the line to protect this. Oh, it's just like, ooh. If That's you just make great. a little bit more money, maybe. I don't know. But uh, <laughs> you guys are right there. Just like, ugh. But I applaud them also. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, I love that as a, a microcosm for the issues of capitalism. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And it's almost like like maybe the idea could be that the only reason why we let the service people go first is so that the rich people don't have to feel bad about watching them on the plane afterwards. <laughs> stuff like that. Or they, they don't want to be held up by people who are potentially wounded in the war. It's like, this guy's only got one leg. I got to wait for him to put his fucking thing up there. Can we just have him go on first? Don't have to look at this shit. I always wondered why the first pl- class people would get on first. To me, I th- if everything about it, it seems like I'd want to be able to show up as late as possible. Mm, that's a really good point, actually. Yeah, because then everyone in the back has already sat in the back. I'm sitting in the front anyway. You, you get have the to service. pass all the poor people? Well, well yeah. The poor people would have to pass you then. That, that was yeah, a Brian but, but that's different. It's different than if there's, there's an audience of, of people, like your loyal subjects on <laughs> each side as you go to, oh, wait, 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 no, you're still in the front of the plane. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah exactly. Mm-hmm. You don't board have to pass last. them at all. And like, yeah, in other I situations, like the poor people will show up first and then you get to show up whenever you want to because the plane ain't leaving without you. You're important type of thing. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, you do get the service early, you know, so as soon as you sat down, you get to like start your thing. But I don't want to maximize my time on the flight. I want to minimize my time on the flight. I'd rather mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. be like, oh, I, I got to squeeze out an extra 20 minutes while you boarded this dumb plane. Mm-hmm. Great. I'll do that. Which I guess is always an option for the first class passengers anyway. But mm-hmm. I, don't know, I just thought, thought that was interesting. Well, well, maybe you maybe idiots were boarding the plane. I made another 30 grand in crypto. <laughs> <laughs> hustle, pre- hustle. Precision thing. You know exactly when boarding starts, so you know exactly when you have to be at the place to get on the plane, as opposed to the line, which can, can fluctuate with how many people are on time or how many people are on the plane. Okay, that, do you think maybe a little bit of it is I want the poor people to see how cool I am that I'm in first class? That, that's like a Brian Regan uh, joke where like he's like they sit the they sit the first class passengers first, so that we have to walk through them. They're just like, oh god, just <laughs> look at them. Just drinking the things. Drinking the mimosas. Um, <laughs> I had an old tweet about uh, walking by the first class passengers and, and going, must be nice. And then watch, walking past business class, like, must be nice. And then walking past economy, being like, must be nice. And then just sitting under the, the drink cart. <laughs> <laughs> You know, there's like an old um, so axiom or an old phrase that's like, I, I didn't have shoes and I thought it was bad until I saw a man with no feet, something like that. I walked by every seat in the plane and thought must be nice until I saw the guy sitting in the middle seat. It's not funny, just an idea. Well, my brain is on fire. And <laughs> thank you for your feedback and your notes, everybody. All right. Wahoo! 
Well, well, thing, I, I got, like the idea of like, oh. you know, there was a first class passenger, but he has no feet. But you're like, no, I'm still in coach. That sucks. Coach sucks. <laughs> I don't care about your foot situation. <laughs> well, we got our headliner coming up. But first, just want to remind everybody to check out our Patreon, patreon.com slash ITA pod. We just published what I think is our best Patreon ever for the month of August. You hear that? Which Patreon, one was that? That was the uh, story time number two, where we were doing bits about... Uh, Pause and uh, yeah. Um, I forget all the we had so many running gags in that one. It was such a fucking delight. I at one point I said I'm dead because of how many things were super funny. Check that out. Patreon.com slash IGA pod. Join for as little as a dollar a month. Additional tiers, exclusive content. Patreon.com slash IGA pod. Next up, we got Uber Drug. All right, Rob. I know you're familiar with the lyrics of Lose Yourself uh, by Eminem. Jared, are you as familiar with them? pretty familiar i'd say that i could do 80 percent of it without the the screen at uh, karaoke so it's interesting because it's used as like a pump-up song but the lyrics are not very motivating for i would say 95 percent of it and if i can paraphrase them for you this is what they are look if you had one chance to make all your dreams come true would you go for it or fuck it up i'm sweaty i threw up on myself i look pretty calm but i'm pretending i forgot what i was supposed to do people are making fun of me people are saying i fucked up i'm broke don't fuck up. Lose track of yourself, but don't fuck up. I don't really know my daughter. Women do not want me. Women don't want me anymore. They prefer someone who doesn't fuck up. So don't fuck up. Lose track of yourself, but don't fuck up. I was booed off stage, but I kept continue. I continued rapping off stage. I don't want to work an office job. I'm broke. I need a plan so I don't go to jail. I live in a trailer and I only have one chance. So don't fuck up. Lose track of yourself, but don't fuck up. You could do anything you set your mind to, man. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Great recreation of, of those lyrics. Excellent. Awesome paraphrasing. What is the moment when you, because you, you keep on repeating the phrases like, so don't fuck up, uh, uh, lose track of yourself? Is that yeah, what you keep on lose, saying? Lose yourself in the music. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, so it's almost like he's saying, he's saying, don't fuck up. I mean, you get into it, but don't fuck up. Oh, yeah, that's funnier. Like yeah, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, lose track of yourself seems like like a weird Japanese to English translation uh, thing. I don't think I don't think that's what's going on there. Agree, agree. Yeah. It also it's kind of funny. Like the idea of the song is like you have like one shot, but if you watch the movie, he clearly has two shots. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're right. There is something incongruous about the 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 verses and the chorus and all the lyrics. Well, yeah, sometimes it's about a guy fucking up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's mm-hmm. like women don't want to fuck me. Threw up on myself. I'm really nervous. I tried. Then I choked. That's the that's the like the theme of the song until the very ass where he's like, you could do anything. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, to, ar- to, to, to argue back and just to get the logic of, of this right. The second verse is I mean, it's like a narrative of a guy who has not made it yet. But then he has made it. And then I'm a little confused about the third verse. No, I don't think he ever makes it in the song. He says he becomes a globetrotter, doesn't know his own daughter, right? The reason he doesn't know his own daughter is because he is such, he's selling out shows, coast to coast shows. He's known as the the globetrotter. But, but Brett, now hold your nose because (laughs) here goes the cold water. (laughs) These hoes don't want him no more. He's cold product. They, you see, they've moved on to the next schmo who flows. He knows dove and sold nada. And so the soap opera is told and unfolds. But the point is, is basically like he is now big, but, you know, uh oh, like now it's just he's old news. It's like, you know, he was hot. He was the hottest guy. Oh, so, climate. yeah, he's even, so he's he's a fuck up and a loser for two courses. And then he for half of a course, he's doing well. And then people are just he's he's nothing again. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a I, very low self-esteem song. <laughs> oh yeah, it's like it's not fun for him. And the third <laughs> verse, <laughs> it's third kind of verse. it's kind of yeah. poetically dark, where it's like you can do anything you want to, like work really hard, become successful for half a second, and it ruins your life. You could do anything. <laughs> <laughs> well, in the first verse, right. Uh, if, if, if I'm giving the song a, a credit, then the first verse is like, you're fucked up and, and, and you're not going to be good at this thing and you're so bad. But then when you hit the mic, you fucking hit it. You just nail whatever you're supposed to nail. And the second verse is like, oh, you know, it's this Rocky three moment. You know, your, your fame is like come and now gone and you're not as strong as you were. And then now it's like the shows kind of suck and these girls don't even want you and the, the media is after you now. 
But when you hit that mic, you, you're still going to take that shot and just like mm. bl- 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 knock mm-hmm. it out of the park. And then the third one is just like, I don't even know who I'm doing this for anymore. <laughs> it's just like all I know, you know, it's like I've already been chewed up and spit out on stage. I've already been whatever, like I'm almost a has been at this point. Uh, but I've got no other, I've got no other plan in mind other than to do this. I'm already like deep into this thing. So once I hit that mic again, I'm going to fucking knock out of the park. Uh, Yeah. So you also can, can get really good at something to the point where you have to do it. Even when you have lost all joy because you just have a lot of bills (laughs) and you feel like you have to do this. It's a sunk cost fallacy. And we can all get trapped in the machine of learning to hate the thing that we used to do for fun. (laughs) <laughs> yeah that to me i do like that because the last line of the song is you can do anything you set your mind to it's just like mm-hmm. wait like, those, those <laughs> you did that for you. <laughs> yeah. is that what you set your mind to but you shouldn't <laughs> but you shouldn't you can you can, you can if you set your mind to it but you should did you set your mind to not knowing your daughter i'm just very confused <laughs> Was that the? Was that the? Purpose? That's part of his uh, manifestation. <laughs> yeah. Just like ah, he's doing sold out shows, and part of his his fantasy is his daughter coming up and being like, "Daddy, daddy." He's like, "I don't know who you are." And then he just goes out of there and ignores it. It's like a vision board. It's like a picture of Haley with just an X through it. Mm-hmm, like, mm-hmm. That's good. He watched every. But there's also uh, a picture of him with himself with an X through it. <laughs> he's a has-been now <laughs> he watched every behind the music and didn't think any part was sad he was just like yeah all of that all of that losing themselves it's great mm, every biopic even the drug spiral downwards he's like yeah give me some of that please uh i just started watching like a, a sean michaels uh documentary all the wrestlers, man. Those guys. It's just like what like every single wrestler has the same like, you know, big musician type story. Mm-hmm. What I always find interesting about those about those documentaries is that they go ninety percent of the way to like behind the curtain, but then they still keep the last ten percent of that wrestling world like a bit of like a mystery. Mm-hmm. Which I don't really understand. It was like it's like you don't understand. I had the chance I was, it was, you know, it was 2004. I'm on, and I got the chance to win the belt. I'm like, you're not winning the belt. I don't know why you keep <laughs> saying it like that. <laughs> you mean you had the chance to like go into Vince McMahon's office and him be Let's like, say, hey, I think we're going to, I think we're going to have you be the champion. <laughs> Stop. Yeah. What if you had one chance to go into Vince McMahon's office and ask him, <laughs> can I please win the belt? And then he says, yes. <laughs> Um, I'll do another quick one. Um, a lady said to me, you know, oh, you're a comedian. Like, you know what Marilyn Monroe said? And I was like, yeah. And then she was like, what did she say? And I was like, happy birthday, Mr. President. (laughs) I didn't know the quote that if a man can make you laugh, he can make you do anything. I was not familiar. Oh, that's so funny. (laughs) Did it really go exactly like that? Or is that yeah. just something you came up with? Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's really funny. Because also, I think she had a couple of famous quotes. And well, so, in, in, in regard to being, being a comedian. A comedian. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. If you can't handle me at my worst, you don't deserve me at my best is another one of hers. But I think Happy Birthday, Mr. President is the funniest example that you could use. Yeah. That is, that is so such a great joke. I love it mm-hmm. so much. I didn't know that the if you can't handle me your worst thing was a Marilyn Monroe quote. Um, it might be, it might also be misattributed to her, but that's always where I've seen it, you know, in in Facebook memes. Seen it. You know, I've also seen I've it misattributed seen it. to her. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Possibly. I, thought was, I thought it was Lincoln. That's weird. <laughs> <laughs> Lincoln's just being a sloppy drunk at a party, it's like ah, what, what, <laughs> making out with people. <laughs> That's I why like, his wife I like crazy. The, the response to that, which is I like far more, is more like if you can't handle me at my worst, like I get it. Uh, that's I'm pretty bad. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm so sorry. I really like that joke, Brett. I if think you that can't it, handle like, me at my four scores, you don't deserve <laughs> me at my seven years ago. <laughs> sorry, go ahead. No, I'm just saying I really like it. I think it needs you know like the fine tuning, the elegance of, yeah, uh, of the Brett yeah. Drek experience. I guess, I guess uh, yeah, I'll have to cut down that that intro part a little bit mm-hmm. I, I, uh, I need it needs a it needs a premise like sometimes i pretend i know right somebody's talking about yeah yeah something along those lines or it could be yeah. date date like heavy where it's just like yeah when you're in the flow of that conversation you don't want to be the like disagree or the whatever like oh you know that marilyn oh yeah 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 like 
what is it or, or i hate mm-hmm. or not maybe i hate like it sucks when people call me out on the times when mm, I, I like that or, a little bit yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. should so, be an easy well, easy fix yeah um yeah it was so it was such a good i couldn't think quickly enough because like i don't know marilyn monroe quotes the way Jarrett seems to <laughs> um <laughs> Jared, the Marilyn fanboy Monroe. I just said that wrong, but whatever. It's <laughs> fine. It's fine. You probably know his Aaron's real name. Aaron's Go ahead. Aaron's What's, what, what, was her, what was her born name? Go ahead, Jared. Let us know. <laughs> oh, I don't remember. Mm, oh, yeah. Okay. Either. All yeah. right. <laughs> oh, it could be anything. <laughs> you know you want to say it. Just say it. Just say I it. Know, I really don't know what it is, guys. I want to play. I want to do this bit with you, but I'm so tired. I was just going to say that I genuinely was trying to think of like, what was what would be a funny thing that Marilyn Monroe did say that I know that she said, and I couldn't think. I was like, I don't remember what the fuck she said until mm-hmm. boom, that. It's just like, what a great, what a great line. <laughs> I got a really dark one. It's like, what was it called? It's like, mmm, barbiturates. <laughs> Is that what she died from? That, yeah, supposedly. You would know yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was going to do a joke like that where it's like, oh, she also said, I'm going to make some gurgling sound. <laughs> <laughs> what was the thing? Don't kill me. I promise I'll tell anybody about the baby. <laughs> That's a, that's Mr. a theory. President. That's a theory that uh, JFK had her killed because she was pregnant with his love child. Does anybody have a theory that she got him killed? Ooh, no. For killing her? That uh, who killed him? Um, <laughs> who's Harvey the guy? Oswald? Lee, Lee Harvey Oswald yeah. was just like a huge Marilyn Monroe fan. It was like, you yeah. son of a bitch. That'd be that's now that's a musical. <laughs> you really think Lee Harvey Oswald did it alone <laughs> with a single bolt action rifle? Oh yeah, Jarrett. he was a, he was a marine. That's what they train you to do, to kill for Marilyn Monroe. <laughs> That's what they teach you in the Marines. God, I am off the rails, fellas. Um, all right. Thanks, guys. Good stuff. Oh, wait, um, Rob, your, your um, William Shatner style talk singing through uh, Lose Yourself was really uh-huh. a delight. <laughs> it really was great. You know? oh, thank you. That is our app. Thanks for joining us in the chat. Thank you guys for joining us in your tired states. Mm-hmm. Always yeah. tell your suitcases you love them, folks. <laughs> you, you never know when it's going to be the last time you'll ever see them. And always take your keys and your medication out of your loved ones <laughs> before you say goodbye. <laughs> You're about to take grandma off the machine and you're like, wait a second. Yeah, take the keys out. Always take your All medication right. out of your Marilyn Monroe's before you say goodbye because you don't know if it's too much. Outro goes here. Outro goes here. All right. Thanks so much for watching. Check back every Monday for new episodes, or you can listen wherever you enjoy podcasts. If you want to help support the show, tell your friends how much you like Is This Anything. Or get involved, like an episode, share, comment, subscribe. If you want more Is This Anything, you got to join our Patreon at patreon.com slash ITAPod. We have a ton of awesome exclusive content on there, and you can join for as little as a dollar a month. Check out the links in the description, and hopefully we'll see you next week.